We live, we die. What's the purpose of life? Brother Reddy gonna show you on the Deen Show. Bismillah, alhamdulillah. Assalamu alaikum. That's the greeting of peace. Peace be unto you. Welcome to another episode of the Deen Show. I'm excited, very excited. As you can see, I'm even sweating. And it's not too hot in here. I'm just excited. And you're going to be excited because we bring you a treat once in a while. And this is that time that we're going to bring you another treat. We have Hussein Yi, who is here on the Dean Show, who's going to be telling us his story on how he came to Islam. When we come back here on the Dean Show, you don't want to go nowhere. This is the Dean, the Dean Show. us here on the Dean Show, Sheikh Hussein Yi. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be unto you. And to you too, brother. Now, now yeah, see, they, they, they're looking at you and they think, you know, this is uh, Mayagi's son, you might do some special move here. Catch! 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 And, and, no and, problem, and, and, <laughs> we got to do a lot of movement for the yes. sake of Allah now. So, they were, are, so are you involved in martial arts? Yeah, on and off, yes, inshallah. Now, were you the one that starred in The Karate Kid? Wax on, wax off. Hat on, wax off. Hey, wax on, hat. Wax off, hat. Concentrate. Look at my eye. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> that was I'm a very, that. very popular movie. Yeah. And they used to have, it was um, Muyagi, he was like the grandmaster. No. And you had Karate Kid. So he came to, what, they were picking on him, bullying him. and. And people remember, wax on, wax off. Allah Akbar. <laughs> <laughs> Did you see that yeah, movie? Yeah, they said every, every harqa is barqa. Every, uh, <laughs> they mean every movement, there's always some blessing. Yes, yes, yeah. mashallah. You have a unique story because you came from a Buddhist background, is that it? Yes, no. So the viewers now, we, we get to speak to a lot of people who came from the Christian background, but now this is unique. I've actually never interviewed someone who came from a Buddhist background. No. Talk to us. Tell us a little bit about your story before Islam. Yeah, Alhamdulillah, I've been, uh, been born uh, from a Chinese family where we know majority of the Chinese, they are Buddhists, or either they are Taoists or Buddhists, and uh, some of my family members, they are Buddhists. And uh, as a Buddhist, we know that uh, if you understand the teaching of Gautama Buddha, then you understand how this word Buddha derived from. Mm -hmm. Now it derived from the word of Buddha, meaning uh, before Gautama become uh, 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 been enlightened. So he was uh, looking for something. The Buddha. Buddha. What was his real name? Gautama. 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 So it's Gautama, and that's what it's named after. Then after is uh, Buddha is not his name. Buddha is a title given to him. What does that title mean? The title derived from the word Buddha means the awakening. Awakening. Awakening that he was looking for something. So say his name again one more time. Uh, Guatama. Guatama. Yeah, he was looking for something for some kind of enlightenment. Okay. So the awakening of him looking for something that is missing in his life is called Bud. Bud. In the Sanskrit word. And that again means? Bud means uh, awakening. 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 So he had an awakening, a Bud. Yeah, he had the Bud. He had the book. And then later on, he, wo he got to leave the palace because he's a, he was a prince. Oh, he was a prince. He was a prince. So he had the cash and money, oh, he but he's missing something. He's missing the spiritual thing. Yes. So he knows something is missing in his life. Uh -huh. you know? So he left the palace, and that's where he started his journey. The journey to look for the truth. And he, was, he encountered a lot of other Hermes or so-called saints at that time. People who isolate themselves in the in the forest, you know, just by themselves, keeping their hair long, their nails uncut, you know, 
but he he's not attracted to that kind of of, of practice. Yes, if it is it's not real, mm -hmm. you know. So he was looking and looking, and nobody can explain to him. Nobody can give him guidance, and that's why he meditated under a bu tree. Uh, under what kind of tree? A bu tree. They call it a bu tree. Yeah. Because if you go back to the history of all these prophets, all prophet will have to go through this kalua. They call kalua. Mm -hmm. Means a kind of seclusion. Seclusion. And uh, so what happened to Guatama? He was meditating under the bu tree, looking for an answer, looking for something. He wanted to know the real life. What is life after death? And uh, from there he was enlightened. And when he received the enlightenment, then he was given the title Buddha. What was this enlightenment that he had, that he experienced? Enlightened that he experienced that he, he understand what is life now. He know what is that. Life is a mission. It's something that you must do here before you meet the Almighty God. So he believed in a God? He believed in God. Because it's, so, it's so uh, interesting. Before you come to understand about Buddhism, normally people say, Gautama Buddha or Buddhism have nothing to do with God. It is a way of life. Now hold on, you were like a, were you actually like a, what do you call him, a monk? Like a Not really a monk, but I do get involved very closely. You were very involved, yeah. so you knew the, their teachings very yes. well. No. Yeah. Now how were you, because you were obviously looking to get enlightened, so before you learned all of this, what was, your, what was your faith before? Now, I was, uh, as a Chinese descendant, you always mix. You have uh, Buddhist, Taoist, and also some of us are Christian. Later on, I became a Christian. So wait, what were you first? What was your family, your mother and father? Family, they are all Buddhist. 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 So you were born into a Buddhist family. Buddhist family. Okay, so now the Buddhist family, okay, they're, they're following these teachings. But this is very interesting because, yeah. like you said, I want, I want to, uh, if you can elaborate on this a little more, because most Buddhists, they say that there is There's no, no God. God. There's yeah. no. So this, this is, is false. No, this is not true. This is what we taught. Yes. But that's nothing to do with the teaching of Gautama Buddha. If you are fair enough to go back to the history of, of Gautama Buddha, then you will come to a conclusion that he do not deny God. You got to go back and study the... Yeah in his dharma, that the teaching of Gautama Buddha is always called dharma. That's dharma their, is their doctrine. That's their doctrine? Their doctrine. Okay. Yeah, their books, they have their books. There are many books, but normally when they talk about books, they talk about dharma. Uh -huh. And then if you look at this teaching, the dharma always start with karma. 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 Karma, if you look in the, teach, the Islamic term, is about faith, about what is being fated by God. You just got to accept. Now, what is going to happen to you? But we always, what they teach is like what goes around comes around. This is like the karma. Yeah. Yeah. Is is it like you do something good, at the end of the day you'll be rewarded accordingly. Yes. Is the only they, they they explain in a different ways, yeah. but all come back to the qadar and qadar. If you compare with what Islam say about karma. It's about qadar and qadar. So what we say is the destiny, same thing as the... Yes, the it's the karma. 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 Okay, let, let's hold off right there. We're going to take a break and we'll be right back on The D Show. There will always be someone that will be there to say something negative. But at the same time, there will be someone there to say something positive also. So just hold on to the rope of Allah. Everything in this universe. Rely and need Allah. The Quran says, don't kill women, don't kill children, don't kill the old people, don't attack the civilians. This is what the Prophet Muhammad told us. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah said that the Prophet never ever started a war against anybody. Back here with Sheikh Hussein Yi. Now tell us, Sheikh, please, 
how deeply were you involved in Buddhism? Uh, if you look back to my lifestyle, yeah. from young I like to get involved in all the spiritual kind of thing. And the best way to get involved is to serve the temple. That's the best way. That means you're in the temple, you're close to the monk, you're close to all these uh, so-called religious people yes. who can explain to you more about you know, what the teaching of Gautama Buddha is about. Mm -hmm. Was he like a prophet to them or what was he? Do they look at him yes, like a god? To, to them, before, they look at them like a leader, spiritual leader. Okay. They don't call him prophet, actually. Yeah, they're like their master. Yeah, they're uh -huh. gurus. So they call like the guru. They're gurus. No? Yeah. But uh, later on, what happened? People start to worship him. Later, this is way yeah, later. Yeah, of course. They later, like the Chinese today, majority, they, if they want to uh, ask something, they will go to the temple, the Buddhist temple, and they start to call his name and ask uh, some kind of blessing through him. Did he ever tell people to do that? No, 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 not in his time. He no. never allowed anybody to worship him or he never claimed himself as God, you know, or that he, he had some kind of Godship with him, no. Correct me if I'm wrong, I'm just coming to the assumption yeah. because you're our teacher, so please, if no. I say anything that's not correct, we in Islam, we believe that over 124,000 messengers were sent. Is it possible that this might have been a messenger that had called people to pure monotheism? Is it possible? To my understanding, yeah. no, I won't uh, say that everybody should believe what I yeah. feel, what do you but feel? through my own research, after coming to Islam, and I compare back to the teaching, the Tawhid of Islam, and the teaching of Gautama, I don't see any differences. And, and I believe like what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did inform us, وَلَقَدْ بَعَسْنَا فِي كُلِّ أُمَّةٍ رَسُولًا أَنْ نَعْبُدَ اللَّهُ وَاسْتَنِبُ الطَّاغُودِ Indeed, Allah said, we have sent to all nations a messenger, a rasul and a messenger, whose duty is to invite people to believe in one God and to stay away from all other gods. That means no idol worshipping, Human worshipping, shaitan, uh, what you call devil worshipping. Yeah. No, you worship only one God. And like what you said early, you said that the prophet did say that the 120,000 of prophet has been sent. Only majority of the name has not been uh, known to, to even to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu And it was stated in the Quran to the Allah inform our prophet that there are many prophets that Allah have sent that his name also Allah did not inform our Prophet and only our Prophet said uh, 120,000 of them. So, so from your investigation, it's possible? It's possible. It's possible. But over time, people change his teachings? It's just like what happened to the, to the Christianity. With Jesus. With Jesus. He Jesus never claimed that he was yeah, God. The same thing happened but to people, Jesus. Yeah, but people are worshipping him. Now, now people are worshipping him. Yeah. The same thing what is happening to a lot of other people, other so-called cult uh, group. Mm -hmm. They are worshipping their gurus, they are worshipping their leaders. Yeah. Where all these good people normally, like I'm talking about Guatama now, never in his lifetime he allowed anybody to worship him. Never once he claimed that he is God, neither he denied God. Because he do pray, there's prostration yeah. Yeah, in the teaching of Guatama. Where can they go now if someone's a Buddhist? Okay, and we are trying to reach out to the whole of humanity because yes. caring is sharing, so we're trying to yes. share the truth. True. So where could they go now to look to, to verify some of these things? The best way is they must come back to the Quran. The yeah. Quran is the final book. Yes. Without going back to the Quran, then it's not easy for you to know what is right, what is wrong. Mm -hmm. The Quran is not something new. It's here to confirm what was revealed to the early prophets. Gotcha. That's very important. That's why it's, it's a blessing yeah, that we Muslims have the Quran, but it's unfortunate a lot of people who are not yet Muslim don't have the opportunity to read the Quran. Mm -hmm. Maybe because Muslims do not encourage them to read, or maybe they are afraid. Yeah. You see, there are people that I have some cousins, sisters, who 
I, I offer her a Quran. I say, I can read your Bible. Can you read my Quran? That's from the devil, they'll say. Have you they heard say, this? Yeah, sometimes. They, and they say, no, 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 please don't give me a book. Like the, because, because we will be reminded. You know, there is some, maybe some magic there. Yeah, you know? crazy. I say, it's just a book. Yeah. I mean. Uh, you read every other book. Yeah. Why read can't this you book? just read this book? Yeah. Just be open about it. Yeah. So we believe that if people will open their heart, be sincere about it, just to read what is written in the Quran, then they will find the truth. The Islam is not here to tell you that, uh, I mean, the Islamic God that we believe Allah, He is not the Lord of the Arabs, a God to a particular nation or tribe. Allah, He is, he is, he is telling us about Himself. He is here, Allahu Rabbul Alameen. Allah is the creator of the universe. He is not Rabbul Arab or Rabbul any other part, particular nation, Pakistani or so on. But he is Rabbul Alamin, means the creator, the sustainer of the universe. Of everything and of all. Of everything. So, so this is the God of Moses, God of Jesus, God of Adam, God of Abraham, God of Buddha. Yeah, and God of Buddha God too. Of Buddha. But tell us now, let's go back a little bit. So. You mentioned Christianity, so you were born into a mother, father, family of Buddhists, and then did you go and become a Christian? Yes, no. Talk to us about the, how did this happen now? No, you, you see, when we are young at the time, when we go deeper to the teaching of Gautama, teaching of Buddhism, you find that there's a lot of don'ts. No? A lot of don'ts, that means you go for pure vegetarian example. Buddhists, you're not Buddhist. supposed to eat meat? No meat. No meat. No meat, because now this is not from the teaching of Guatemala, no. This also is something, yes, Bida, some addition, yeah. cultural influence? Yes, yes, it's okay. a Bida because <laughs> they are very close to Hinduism. Yeah. You know, because even Guatemala is from India. Yeah. So they have the influence of this vegetarian kind yeah. of thing. Of course, they have good intention. They say that if you eat a lot of meat, it's very difficult for you to control your desire. Mm -hmm. Your destructive desire. There goes the fasting. Yep. Five pillars of Islam. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Everything is in. But it's it's yeah. it's uh, it's it's uh, been distorted. Yeah. It's part of the partial here and there. But when you look into Islam, Islam cover everything. Yes. That's why we say Islam is a complete din. Allah says, "Al yawm akmal tulakum dinakum." Today I have perfected this religion for you. Alhamdulillah. That is how the, the difference between the early uh, Dian and Islam, because Islam is here to complete and to perfect what has not been perfected before this. Yes. So if you look carefully about the teaching of Guatemala, I mean, to be fair to this man, yeah, you will never find anything that he said against the Tawhid. Against the pure monotheism, yeah. one God. One God. Not three and one, four and no, one. No, no. God, oh, God, man, none no, of this no, stuff. No. God having children, none of this. No, none of this. Okay. None of this. And also, you see what he was, his main teaching is divided into two the sukkah and the dukkha. Sukkah and the dukkha. What, sukkha, is, what is that? Sukkah means glad tiding. Okay. That means uh, good news. Good news. And dukkha means a warning. A warning if you reject the masses. Yes. Now you go back to Islam. Same thing here. The same thing that Allah sent the prophets to bring two news. Bashira wa Nazira. Good news and bad news. Good news for those who respond and accept the truth that come from one God. Mm -hmm. The God of every one of us. The bad thing is if you reject it. That means you choose not to believe in the true God. Yes. It's not good for you, of course. Because at the end of the day, like you do not appreciate what Allah the Almighty who have given you everything. In return, you go against Him. Mm -hmm. It's not good for everybody. So, Sukkah and Dukkah, if you look into that, it's just like Bashira wa Nazira. Yes. So, but because of the, there are so many bid'ah in Waf too, and the don is more than the do, it made life very difficult for people who are very young age, like we. So that was you now. Teenage. That's me. Too now. many rules and regulations. Yeah, it's not easy. It's it was not tough. Easy. It's tough. I mean, mm, uh, 
no woman at the time, no, no lady, you cannot yeah. have any religion with the opposite sex. Yeah. You, know? you just isolate yourself, you get close to the Almighty, uh -huh. and then uh, you got to learn how to beg, how to be humble, you know? they learn how to walk barefoot, no, and all this teaching, if you go back to the Quran, even the Quran says, Wala tamshi fil ardi maraha. Don't walk on the earth, of, uh, on, the, the, on this land, with pride. Yeah. Be humble. But how do they teach the people? To be humble, you must take out your shoes. So you can say it's kind of going to an extreme now. Yeah. No, I'm, I'm, I'm saying that they are here to prepare. Yeah. To prepare the people uh -huh. to get ready for the coming revolution. Yeah. It's like Moses prepare his people before coming of Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus is preparing his people for the coming of Prophet Muhammad So that that's what So of course this is more on the 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 way to prepare people from one stage to another stage. Yeah. And then when come to Islam is complete. Okay, let's hold off right there. We got to take another break, Shia. No. And we'll be right back with more of the story here on the Dean Show. If any Christian can point out a single unambiguous statement where Jesus Christ peace be upon him says, says that I am God, I'm ready to accept Christianity. It comes to you the truth and the attribute of the one who created you that he's one and alone running this universe, that he doesn't become born, he doesn't die, he doesn't eat and go to the bathroom. This is not God. We got problems here. Yeah. This, this, it doesn't make sense. Who was Jesus worshipping? Because it's recorded in the Gospels. Despite all of the other issues about the Gospels, we put those aside. We just say it's mentioned there that Jesus worshipped God. One who protects us from hunger. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Hussein Yi. So now, too many rules, and we're learning a little bit about Buddhism, and we're being enlightened to know that, hey, there's pure monotheism in there, and a lot of similarities to Islam. No. But now we also see that, okay, as a young man, all these rules are not fitting with what you want to do, so you move over to, what's the next step here? Uh, because I've heard that it's against my fitra. Okay. It's also against my nature as a human. There are so many don'ts, you know? Yeah. I, I don't think this is correct. Yes. But who are we to make any comment at the uh -huh. time? Uh, because now all this teaching, this so-called, uh, uh, all this religious teaching is more on tradition. There are a lot of other things involved now. It's not easy to go back to the pure teaching of the Guatemala. Is Buddha. it kind of like if you go to one village, they're doing something different from the other one? Of course, everyone's of course. changing? Changing. Everybody okay. is doing some adjustment here yeah. and there. So then uh, we, we make another hijrah to Christianity. Christianity, my, my sister, they are also very involved in a, in a Christian religion. Okay. So I became a Christian. And in Christianity, of course, we enjoy life because in Christianity, almost everything is okay. Now you it's can the opposite now. Now you can, with the, what we say, kick it. Yeah. Meaning, yeah. like you can just. Yeah, we're free now. You're free now. <laughs> just say you believe. You believe in our alhamdulillah, Everything is okay. It's all everything taken care of. Yeah. You, you got know? the JC Gold card. We put yeah. it. Put it on Jesus' best. Stock for the law. So to us, we feel that is oh, this is good. Yeah. Know? This is this is more interesting in life. Yeah. You know? Almost you can do anything if you commit sin. You just go to make some confession and then baptize us. And alhamdulillah, yeah. you are clean again. And you can just go ahead and let your, your, your desires yeah, run loose? Just do. No. So this is it now, Christianity. We're going to go ahead. This is a very, very interesting story. And I'm sure you're excited to hear how he came to Islam from Buddhism to Christianity. Yeah. But you're going to have to tune in next week for the rest of this show. You think we can continue on with part two? Inshallah. God Inshallah. willing. So we'll see you same time, same channel here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Hussein Yee's his journey to Islam. Peace be unto you. Salam alaikum. I just want to say very simple message. He is the maintainer. One of the, the beautiful preserver. things about our religion of Islam he is the emphasis the on direct he ritual and prayer to God directly. Is the there is no intermediary. The lights will go on after the party and the party will end. 
it's, it's very simple and very clear. There are no superstitious rituals, no strange incantations. It's Time is running out. We might not make it till tomorrow. And this is something that we need to think about. He is the maintainer. Coming to the truth requires two things. It requires deep thinking that you've already done. But it requires another step, and that's courage. If you have the truth, but you don't have courage, you won't stand up for the truth. And that's as good as standing up for falsehood. I, I would say this thing that you just told me, it's not in the scripture. And they would say, a marginal note added by a scribe, yeah, okay, we know that. And I'd be thinking, if you know this is not the Bible, why are you preaching it as if it's gospel truth? Bismillah, alhamdulillah, assalamu alaikum, peace be unto you. I'm Eddie, your host, and you're watching The Dean Show. Thank you for tuning in to another exciting episode. Last week, we had a chance to bring you Sheikh Hussein Yi, who went from Buddhism to Christianity, and we stopped right there. And everybody's excited to hear the rest, so when we come back, you're going to hear the rest here on The Dean Show. Sit tight, don't go nowhere. This is The Dean, The Dean Show. Assalamu alaikum, Shia. Wa alaikum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Nice to be back again. Nice to have Ayyakallah. you back again. Thank you for finding the time to be with us here on the Dean Show. Ayyakallah. We're out there, we're trying to share because we care, and yes. we're trying to help people understand the most misunderstood way of life in the world, yet the fastest growing Islam. Allah submission Allah. to the one God. Yeah, Allah wa la ilaha illallah. And you came to this realization that this is the truth, and we're trying to. Because there's Muslims all over, even in China. If yes. there was Muslims on the moon, we'd be interviewing them too. Allahu Akbar. So tell us now, just to recap, we talked a little bit about your journey. Your parents were Buddhists, no. and you practiced that a little bit, and then you came to Christianity. Just to, for the viewers that weren't with us last week, just kind of bring us up to speed, bring us up to where we left off, please. Yeah, alhamdulillah, like I, I was uh, sharing with you uh, the last uh, meeting, about uh, what we learn from uh, Buddhism and then how we end up making the first hijra from Buddhism to Christianity. Hijra, what is that? Hijra is migration. Migration, okay. Migration. That means we are moving uh, forward, we are going ahead mm -hmm. in life, that we keep on uh, moving from better to best, inshallah. You, you mentioned the, the founder of what people attribute to Buddhism, what's his name again? Guatama. 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 And uh, he had the Bud. Yes, he had the Bud, the awakening. He was a prince. Yeah, he was a prince. He, he was going out and trying to get enlightened. Yeah, because he found that something's missing in his life. Yeah. Life is not just enjoyment, uh, happiness, you know, and just all the good life surround, surround you, but there must be more than that. Uh, uh, so life is full of challenge, actually. Yeah. But he was not being exposed earlier until Allah opened his heart and he was exposed to, to the experience some people suffer. Yeah. And that's why he started to look for an answer. And that's why Islam, now when you come to Islam again, Islam is the answer for everything. Yeah. Even Allah says, فَإِنَّ مَا الْأُسْرِ يُسْرَى Life starts with suffering and then there will be ease after the suffering. Yes. And you will suffer again, there will be ease again. Uh -huh. And that is life. So we, we discussed that in part one, how you seeing and being in a Buddhist family, you saw that he did actually believe in one God. Yes. And you talk about that. And then we also talked about that he never called people to worship him or to no, take him no, as a God or no, to give no. him the reverence like God. Yeah, no. He never claimed Godship. Never once he claimed his God. Neither he denied God. He didn't even deny God. He didn't deny God. But if you look in his lifestyle, he worshiped something. He worshipped something. And he was talking about qadr and qadr in the karma. Karma, we talked about karma. Yes. That's the destiny. Yeah, and then he talked about sukkah wa dukkah. That's what 
all the other prophet was the sent glad tidings. The glad tidings. Yes, if you believe in God, do the good deeds. Yeah, do the good deeds. You get paradise. Be humble, help yeah. the poor, help the needies, be kind to people. Yes. Be loving, be good to the environment, to the animals. This is Islam. Yeah, this is Islam. Submission to the one God. Acquire Allah peace Allah. by submitting to Ma the Allah. owner of peace, the one God. Allah he Allah. was seemed like he was yes. living that life. This the same teaching. Yeah. You know, that's why if you go back to the teaching of when I become a Christian, if you go back to the teaching of Jesus, it's the same thing. Same thing. The same thing. Now, now that's where we left off. You were seeing that there was too many restrictions here with the Buddhism. Yes. So now you got... I mean, my first migration. Migration now, now to Christianity. To Christianity. Okay. In and Christianity, of course, you know, we, being a Christian, everybody who has been a Christian, they know you can do almost everything. Yes. So it, it's really make life very comfortable for you. What is for the, your what, own desire. What do they say you have to believe? They say that what? Can you explain a little bit about their teachings? Yeah, it, it, it's simple. In Christianity, as you believe in Jesus, his salvation. You don't have to worry about your future anymore. When you believe in Christ, and then it's okay. Even whatever sin you're committed, you don't have to worry because he's here to save you. Mm -hmm. yeah. He's here to he have sacrificed, he crucified his life to save you. So you were a Christian, you believed this? Of course, when yeah. I was a Christian, I thought, yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, it's easy. It seemed to be very practical. Yeah. But when you look at the Aqidah, you know, when you really want to know more about the creed of the creed. In, Jesus, in Christianity yeah. today, you get very confused. Now, were you serious? Were you seriously looking for the truth? How, how was your state at that time? Yeah, I mean, no, when I became a Christian, when I look at the teaching, it's so beautiful at that time. I mean, it's so caring, loving, talk about love, love God, love Jesus, love yourself, love your neighbor. I mean, it's very interesting. I mean, it really moved me. Yeah. I say, if this teaching is so good, yeah, the, the, the religion of love, I should bring it and share it with, with my people. That's how I, I, I commit myself in the Christian missionary school. And oh, also, you went to the missionary yeah, school? Yeah, because I So you are now a layman. You were going to yeah, learn I got to really learn, about this yes. so you can share a missionary school. Yeah, because I feel that it's part of my duty now. If something yeah. is so good, it's not right for me to keep it to myself. Mm -hmm. It's too selfish and it's bad. Yeah. This good message of God, Jesus at that time, is I must bring it back to my own community and to my friend and tell them, come, come, let's come back to God and worship the true God. That's, a, that's, that's what, what believe. I believe at yeah. that time. So did someone challenge this belief? How did you come to Islam now? How did you, how long were you a Christian? For a few years. For a few years? But I didn't really have any challenges from anybody. But when I want to prepare myself, I got to learn more about, I got to go deeper. Because I'm worried if I start to carry out this mission, if the people ask me, I don't have an answer. Oh, you wanted to be more knowledgeable now. Yeah, it's important to prepare yourself. Yeah. So when I want to prepare myself, then I come across this, this uh, concept of Trinity again. Trinity. About God, the Holy Father, the Holy Son, and the Holy Ghost, or you call the Holy Spirit. Okay, it triggered me because I, I, I don't have, it's not easy for me to believe a human can become God. And why must God become a human? Doesn't make sense. It didn't make sense to me. But that is what I, we were taught at the time. We said, oh, I asked the Father to enlighten me. The Father said, my son, be patient. Let the Holy Ghost come and enlighten you. So I was waiting, waiting, and no, no ghost come to me. So you got to no feel spirit. something. You got to be... Yes. Visited by the Holy Spirit? By the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That's what I was taught. Mm -hmm. I was waiting and waiting and I, it didn't happen to me. Mm -hmm. And at the same time, because when you want to start to carry out this mission, especially I have a lot of Muslim friends too. And so sad that the Muslims don't even invite me to Islam. So I have nothing to do with Islam. I don't know what about Islam. I think this religion belongs to only to one group of people, not for everybody. Yeah. So then I thought that if Christianity is true, Jesus is God, and these people don't believe that Jesus is God, I think I want to share with them this beautiful religion. Now that's like, you, you feel like if they don't accept this, they'll go to hell? Yeah, the that's, same thing. Yes, of okay. course, we believe in that, because there's the only salvation we have. Yeah. 
The blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus. That yes. God committed suicide, actually. Uh, to save you. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's a good thing. Uh -huh. You know, to me at that time, it's good. So I want to share this good thing with my fellow brothers or friends. And then before that, I need to equip myself. Learn something about Islam. Yeah. I didn't learn through the Muslim. Because I want to carry this mission, this message of Jesus to them. So I got to get myself prepared. And this is the work of Allah, of course. This is part of Allah's Qadr. I read the book of Sayyidina Omar. I was not allowed to read the Quran because, you know, in the 60s, you know, Muslim don't give you Quran. You see, you are not a Muslim. Uh, you cannot hold the Quran. You cannot read the Quran. So what can we do? Yeah. So we have the opportunity to read the book of Sayyidina Omar ibn Khattab, the second caliph. So this is one of the companions of the last and final yes. messenger sent no. to mankind of Prophet Muhammad yes. upon him. No. So you got a hold of this book. Yes. And let's take a break right there and we'll continue on. Inshallah. 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 We'll be right back on the Dean Show. He is born about 60 years ago in former Yugoslavia, today's Bosnia. After Second World War, can you imagine today you have one child killed too much? It's important that we realize that Islam is a gift. So we believe that in the teachings of Jesus, what is left, there is truth in there. But the truth has been mixed up with paganism and with nature worship. And so Islam has given you a pure, straightforward way of approaching monotheism. Peace be unto you. Welcome back to the Dean Show with Sheikh Hussein Yi. And now you didn't get a hold of the Quran, which is the verbatim word of God. No. Now, let's just take a side note. This is wrong, isn't it? Because we as Muslims, we need to be sharing the Qur'an, the meaning at least, with the people. Did they have the meaning, the translation of the Qur'an back they, then? They, they do have, they do have. But they were still holding off? Yeah, because they were, they were taught to believe that this holy book of the Muslim, the Qur'an, is only for Muslims. And no Muslim have the right to touch, even to touch it. So that's what they were taught. What do you say about this? Of course, before I don't have any comment, I, yeah. I don't know what is the real teaching of, Jesus, of Islam. But later on, when I came to Islam, I found that it's very wrong for wrong. them to do that. Yeah. Because Allah Himself confirmed in His book, in the Quran, Shahr Ramadan, Allazi unzila fi al Quran, Huda linasi wa bayinati min al Huda wa furqan. In the month of Ramadan, Allah revealed this book as a divine guidance. For mankind. Mankind. Not just the Arab. Not the Arab. Or not the just the Chinese. Or the Turks. Or the white or, or the black. For everybody. For everybody. Alhamdulillah. Can you see how beautiful the book of Allah is? That this divine guidance of Allah is for humanity, for mankind. Yes. And it's very sad that the Muslims have failed yeah, to act upon this ayah. Yeah. They thought that this book only ours book. Our yeah. You can have now. You have nothing to do with. We this. get stingy now. Yeah, got stingy. You got to share. Oh. Sharing is caring. So now you don't get a hold of the verbatim word of God, the Quran, but you get a hold of another piece of Islamic literature or something. Yes. What happens here? Alhamdulillah, after a read and then, it's Allah's hidayah, of course. Now you said two Arabic words, so they don't think the not yet Muslims they don't think we're saying some code words here. Yeah. You said Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yes. Sir. And hidayah. What do you say? Yeah. Alhamdulillah means all praise to Allah for the guidance Allah has given me. Hidayah is guidance. And you said Allah. They yes. might think it's a moon god. No. Who's no. Allah? Allah is a creator. Yeah, he is a God to everything. Okay, so yeah. this is not the sun or the moon, no, but no, the creator no. of the sun yeah, and the moon. creator of the sun. Okay, the good. Moon. Sorry, no. please go ahead. So when I read the life history of Omar, who was once the enemy of Islam, you know, he is known for his, his bravery, you know, and then uh, he have determined, he was so determined, to kill the Prophet. This is a man Omar. who you're reading this book, yes. Omar. He's Abba the companion Omar. of the Prophet. He was an enemy to Islam before. Yes, yes, of okay. course. 
And mm -hmm. later on, uh, he was exposed to the, the, the Quran and uh, he heard the recitation of Surah Toha by his brother-in-law and Allah gave Hidayah and then he became a Muslim. Wow, so this is an enemy of Islam. Like many people now, they don't know Islam. Yes. So maybe just because they're following what the media is saying, no. so now they're having this hatred, enmity. He was one of those people. Yes. But then when he came to the Quran himself, Allah the verbatim Allah. word of God, he got guidance, he, he got, got enlightenment, guidance. and he accepted Islam. He accepted Islam. So you read this story, and what yes. happened? Yes. Then I say, oh, this Quran must be very powerful. So if this Quran can change this man, I think this Quran can change me. Wow. You see? I, I, I have that kind of feeling now. Yes. I see, and then I started to learn more about what, the, uh, what Omar is you know, starting to become the Caliph, the second Caliph, the Tawhid in Omar, how he was taught by Prophet Muhammad to believe in one God. One. One, just one. No God. buts after that. No. Just one. Leave just it alone. One. La Sharika. Don't play with it. No. One. One. And that's because of that, Omar was given the title by the Prophet Al-Farooq A man who really distinguished the true, the right and the wrong From distinguishing right and yeah. wrong, Farooq No playing anymore yeah. He's a man of his word To the extent that the Prophet said Wherever Omar moved Every place that he walked, the Satan will run away Yes because the burning flame of Iman in him, a man that will not compromise, will not tolerate with any form of shirk. No setting up partners with God no. whatsoever. Allah Akbar. God Allah. alone worship just him. So, so yeah, when I look at his uh -huh. lifestyle, I say, Allah is so simple. It's so straightforward. And it's so easy for you to accept that God cannot be like any one of us. No? And God cannot. Yeah, be, be, be a form of anything but he is by himself like what Allah said قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ قُلْ هُوَ اللَّهُ أَحَدٌ اللَّهُ الصَّمَدُ لَمْ يَلِدُ وَلَمْ يُولَدُ وَلَمْ يَكُلْ لَهُ كُفُوًا أَحَدٌ say Allah is one Allah is someone everything depends on him Lam yalid wa lam yulad Neither he is a father to anybody Or child to anybody Wa lam yakul lahu Kufwan ahad Nothing is equal to him You, got, you have children if you don't mind me asking? Yes, of course And, and you have sons I have sons Daughters Yes But now God doesn't have any of these similarities No, no, no. 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 But Allah you believed this before Didn't you as a Christian That God had a son? Yes Okay so That's what we were taught Yeah But of course it it, it, it makes you think for a while. Uh -huh. uh, are you sure, you know, can a, 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 a God be a son to somebody and then he become the father himself? Because you're looking at your son, he's going to grow up to have the qualities like his father. Yes. But then did you think sometimes, well, that's, gonna, that's two gods then, isn't it? They are sure to have two. Yeah. No, it, of course, it's not easy. It's confusing. I'm get, let's not, because we're going to yeah. get confused and confuse yeah. everybody. Allah. So you get unconfused and you come into Islam. Which is simply the call to acquire peace by submitting to the one, God. the one God. So what happens now? The more I learn about Islam, the more I read the Quran, la raiba fihi. There is the end. That means there is no doubt that Quran is the truth. It's simple. It's simple. Rational. Rational. All your questions are answered. Us. Purpose of life. Alhamdulillah. Where are you going when you die? Everything is clear. It's clear. No it's ambiguity. Clear. Dunya akhirah. Not only talk about your relation with God, but also about your relation with this world, with the environment, with the people around you. It's beautiful. That's why we believe now uh -huh. that everybody who still don't understand Islam and hate the Muslim, if they hate the Muslim because they look at the Muslim who show good, bad example, of course, there is their right to hate anything that is bad. But we hope that they are just to themselves. Just open the Quran. Just read. Read. Yeah. With, with an open heart and open with mind. An open heart. And then be a judge to yourself. You be your own judge. We are not here to judge anybody. We are here to share with them. To tell them that this holy divine book of Allah, Al-Quran al, al is for them. 
So we hope that they will read with an open mind, open heart. Then they will understand. Yeah. Are we Muslim here to promote hatred? No. Are we here to terrorize people? No. Are we here to kill? No. no. We are here to save humanity. We are here to share with them. We are calling them day and we are praying for them by night. May Allah open their heart. Amen. And I'm sure if people who start to open the Quran, don't judge Islam through the people, please. You get confused. That's why when I talk to my family members, my siblings who are not yet Muslim, if you say the Muslim, I bet I have no comment. Maybe sometimes you'll find bad Muslim, like you have bad Christian, bad Buddhist, bad this, bad. You have bad and ugly everywhere. If they say Muslim, I bet I have no comment. But if they say Islam is bad, I will not allow that to happen. Yeah. Because it's not right for them to comment about Islam when they do not know anything about Islam. So I will say, please, read the book of Allah. Islam is not Muslim. Muslim is the people. Islam is the teaching. And, and, and people make mistakes. People can make mistakes. Yeah, yeah, but Islam is perfect. Islam is perfect. It's from the Allah Creator. Allah. Let's take a break there. We'll be right back here on The Dean Show. One God, worship Him alone. Do what He wants you to do. Put your desires, this thing inside you that just wants this and wants that and you just can't get enough. You know what? You'll never get enough until the dirt's in your mouth. Don't let it come to that. Be sincere and honest. Ask the one who created you to guide you. It's the first step. Put off chasing all the women and the good times and the parties and this and that. There is no one worthy of worship except Allah. Don't wait. You never know if death would come today for you or not. Back here on the Dean Show with Sheikh Hussein Yi. Now, we got a few more minutes, and I have so much to ask you, but so little time. So in brief, tell us. So you actually, you accepted us. Tell us just a moment. Now, what happened? Okay, you learned this, and then what did you do? What did you have to say, do? Did you have to go get dipped in a pool to become a Muslim? Did you have to do some weird <coughs> stuff? What did you have to do now to become one who has submitted to God, a Muslim like Jesus, Moses, Abraham? They were all Muslims. They were ones who submitted to the will of God. Of what did you have to do now? Alhamdulillah. After I became Muslim, when I started to know that this teaching is so simple and it's easy to understand, and the creed is so clear cut, the tawhid is very clear. Say there's what God. One God. One God. Finish. Yeah. And all human, you have prophets of God, they are good people, they are prophets, they are messengers. Then I found that I've got to learn more about this deen. Yeah. Before I start my mission again, because mm -hmm. I love to share by nature. I love to share whatever I have, I like to share with others. So that's why I get involved in the circle of studying Islam. Is this after you took shahad, the yes. test? Yes. So tell us, tell us that. What did you have to do? What did you say to become a to Muslim? To be a Muslim is so simple tell at us the that. time. When I uh, met up with the, one of the imams in the mosque, I, have, I show him, uh, I tell him I have the intention to be a Muslim. And then he said, no problem, you want to be a Muslim. Just make shahada. What is shahada? Shahada Allah ilaha illallah wa shahadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Make sure, declaration of faith, they call it. Yeah. Saying that I declare from today there is none worthy to be worshipped except Allah alone. The one God. The one God. And the Prophet Muhammad is the last messenger of Allah. That's the same in Aramaic. Jesus said, Allah ha. So it's yeah, the same God. The same God. So if you were living during the time of Jesus, is it safe to say that you would say the same thing? Oh, except God. Jesus was the messenger then. Yes. Muhammad is the messenger now. Yes. That's and Jesus also, is there every prophet, there is a title given to them. Yes. Like uh, Prophet Abraham, Khalil Allah. And your prophet Moses, Kalam Allah. Prophet Jesus, Ruh Allah. Say these, Prophet define Muhammad. these names that you just said. Yeah, these are titles given by God. Friend of to God. Different, different. Friend of God. Yeah. yeah. Khalil Allah, Musa, Kalam the one who spoke to God. The one who spoke to God. Yeah, Moses. Moses. And the one who was uh, born without a father. That's Jesus. Jesus. Peace be upon him. Peace be upon him. And Prophet Muhammad, Rasulullah. That means the messenger, the of, messenger of God. So you declare God. that there's no God worthy of worship except Allah. Muhammad is the messenger. Now you're a Muslim. Yes. You Muslim. actually went on to study because it's interesting. The more you studied these other man-made faiths, Allah. you saw the contradictions, you saw the ambiguity, didn't make sense. The more you studied, 
Islam, you saw that it was from the divine, and you went on to become an Islamic scholar. This is amazing. You went to study, and you got learned, no. and now you're teaching and preaching Islam to the world? No. Yes, it's important because knowledge is light. Without knowledge, that's why we are here, we believe that. We like to have more open dialogue with so-called intellectual yeah. who are not yet Muslim. Because we believe that there's no compulsion in religion. No compulsion in religion. Force, nobody can force you. Yes. But it is good for so-called intellectual scholars in any field. If you want to talk about Islam. You're inviting them to come. Of course. They can come to the mosques. They're welcome. Someone's thinking out there, they say, you know what, man, these are the people who caused the 9-11. What do you got to say about that? We all know. <laughs> We have no, no comment about it because it's the, what the media said. This has nothing to do, this doesn't have anything to do with Islam. Because as a Muslim, we don't believe that the Muslims should get involved in this kind of act. This because killing innocent people is again the teaching of Islam. Did you just hear that? This is clear? Yes. Yeah, this is not a difference account. of opinion? This is no, no, no killing of no innocent killing. We are here to save women, people. children, none no, of this. No, no. So this is foreign to Islam? Yeah. Okay, so now I'm sure the not yet Muslim, he can relax a little bit. And maybe he can start should. to take more of this in because this is something of programming that the media yeah. tries to vilify Islam and make people a little more scared. We also hesitant. pray may the people involved in the media be fair to all of us, to be fair to the Muslim. Be Please. fair. If you want to know more about Islam, you must ask the Muslim scholars. Yes. Don't ask just anybody who don't have any sound foundation about Islam. Mm -hmm. It's not right. It's not been fair. We believe this reporter, this media, they are good people. Yes. We only ask them to be fair to us. I learned from you, I remember you abbreviated, you said, Islam says love all mankind. Allahu Akbar. Do you, if, you, if you understand the word I-S-L-A-M, I shall love all mankind. We want the best for everybody, don't we? Of course. So tell them, you got 30 seconds, give them the message of Islam, give them your closing comments and advice, please. No. We would like to call all the brothers and sisters who are following this program. Number one, please try to understand the difference between Islam and Muslim. It's important. If you have the right understanding, then you know what is Islam and what is a Muslim. And also the second thing you must understand about religion and tradition. The teaching of religion is so beautiful, but when you involve tradition, of course, you get confused. And lastly, also, you must different between the nation yeah, and religion. Yeah, religion belong to God. Nation, it can come. There is no different. And Islam belongs to all people. That means Islam belongs to the black, to the white, to the Chinese, to everybody. It's not only a religion for the Arabs. And the Prophet Muhammad sallam remind us as Muslim number one, I hope our Muslim people also understand the spirit of this religion. He said, Ayyuhan nas, inna rabbakum wahid, wa inna abakum wahid, kullukum in adam wa adam in turab. The Prophet was talking to his ummah, all the Muslim, but the way he addressed them, he remind them by saying, Ayyuhan nas. Why then he said, O oh Muslim, O oh Hujaz, O oh Firgamish, he said, Ayyuhan nas. That means the Prophet want his ummah to understand the message of Islam is for humanity, for all mankind, not only for the Muslim. Indeed, your God is only one, there is Allah. Whether you believe in Him or not, it's, of, it's yours, you choose. But there's only one God. And all of you came from one family, from one father. All of you from Adam and Adam from soil or from clay. And then the best among you, the Prophet said, is those who have piety, not because of your color, your name, but because of your faith in Allah. So we hope, inshallah, this universal message of Islam will benefit this ummah, this human, will benefit all the nation, and we will have more peace and more understanding. By having the right understanding about Islam, Read the Quran with an open mind and open heart. If you don't have a copy of the Quran, you can contact us, you can contact the Deen Show, inshallah. We believe that we are ready to share with you and send you a copy of the Quran. So we will keep on praying for all of you 
who are still far away from Allah, only Allah can give hidayah to whom He please. And we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give us peace within ourselves, our family, our neighbor, and may Allah give peace to the world. Amen. By saying La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, and we become Muslim, and Muslim is a person who believes in peace. That is why only among the Muslim, only in the Muslim community, they always greet people with the greeting of peace. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. And this is what I like to end my speech with to, to all the brothers and sisters that I like to wish all of you Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh. May the peace of Allah be upon all of you and His blessing and His mercy. And may Allah guide us and please integrate yourself, integrate yourself with everybody. Don't isolate yourself. Don't stay away from other people. Get close to everybody. Let them know the beauty of Islam. May Allah bless us. May Allah guide us. May Allah forgive us. Aqulu qawli haza wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ir muslim in kulli zam fa astaghfiru innahu ghafur rahim subhanakallahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha ila anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilai assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh Shaykh, thank you very much. We started with peace, we end with peace. Masha'Allah. Peace be unto you. Thank you. May Allah bless us all. Inshallah. Thank you. Hayakallah. Thank you, Shaykh. And thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Dean Show, another, sherry, another story shared with you of another person coming to peace. Peace through submitting yourself to the owner of peace, the creator of the heavens and earth. So we hope that you got to benefit. And if you'd like to pick up the Quran, dial this number on the screen, 1-800-662-ISLAM. We'll have one shipped to you absolutely free. Allah. And we'll see you next time here on The Dean Show. Until then, peace be unto you. He created the universe To Him belong the heavens and the earth The ever-living, He is the first He's the owner of mercy He sent His messengers To warn His creatures Of the grave dangers Of worship other than Allah There is none greater Than the Creator Allahu Akbar Allahu Akbar There is none greater Than the Creator